our noise is starting. Not terrible yet, but it's starting. It's right at that sound where it's annoying. So when it gets a little worse, I want to pull that field wire off and see if it changes. Welcome back. We're on the 2010 F-150 with a 5.4. We've got that alternator squealing sound. I put a uh, long screwdriver up to my ear to confirm the location and it makes a noise on the alternator. Sounds like a bearing. It sounds like it's running dry. Now I replaced this alternator I believe like four times now. I probably should have went out and bought another Ford alternator but it was let me think three three hundred and some dollars and it's a 2010. I got 173,000 and change miles on it and these come with a one-year warranty. I replaced this alternator about a year ago. I look it up and it's out of warranty. So <laughs> that's the way it always works, you know. Um, the last alternator, Dawson and I had the dump trailer behind the truck. We went down to the local um, quarry. We brought back some crusher run. We were loaded down, had nothing to do with the alternator. We didn't know there was any issue going on. There was no sound. But we saw smoke coming out of the hood. We pulled over, which happened to be near his high school and a pizzeria. And we opened the hood. Smoke was rolling out. It looked like in the water pump area. I looked uh, everything over and I could see. And you can't see it here, but you can see it on the new one. I unboxed the new one. This is plastic, this housing. This housing had melted, melted, and flowed down onto the back there, and smoke was coming out of the alternator. I couldn't even turn the alternator. It was set up. And um, so we went in, had our pizza, come back out. The engine was a lot cooler at that time. I broke the um, pulley free and the alternator did turn. We started the truck up. It made a little noise, but I said, let's get in and go. So we got home and I ordered an alternator. And here we are one year later, we're doing it again. And like I said, I, you know, 400 bucks, you know, coils at 600 bucks. I, it's hard to justify putting a thousand dollars in a vehicle that old so I go with aftermarket parts that's just the way it is and um, sometimes you win it works great other times well you get burnt um, the price on them I believe it was ninety three dollars that's still high for an alternator not high considered a Ford alternator so um, let's get this put in first thing we got to do is we disconnect the battery this is a a thousand amp we're gonna eight millimeter we'll disconnect the battery cable I'm not too worried about the keep alive memory because if you remember from a previous video we had a check engine light I replaced number three coil we had a p303 cylinder three misfire I replaced that coil and it's running pretty good I drove it two towns over and quite a few stop and goes and um, startups and no issues. So, um, if we, you know, lose a keep alive memory, it isn't going to take long to uh, run the monitor tests again. So we disconnect the battery. I've already loosened these, uh, cable or clamps up with a screwdriver so we can pull this air horn out of the way. And then, um, it looks like we need, I gotta get down here. We need to take our belt tensioner loose. See how shiny new that is? And um, I'll get a ratchet for that breaker bar. And I can't see the alternator. I guess it looks like it's around a 
12 or 13 millimeter. There's one, two, three, four bolts here, and then whatever connects on the back. So I'm going to start off with the, the battery here. We'll get that disconnected. Eight millimeter. Love these gear wrenches, you know. Make sure it stays down out of the way. I brought out a 12, 10, 13, and 8 flat blade screwdriver, a half inch breaker bar. I did take the belt off. I just I have my ratchet still on it. And you can uh, just use a bar. Just use a bar and um, just pull on the tensioner. We're going to take our air chambers off here. Get this out of the way. Probably a good time to look at the mass airflow sensor. It's on the back edge here. So let's see if we can get in a little closer. See that alternator. So now that we got the power disconnected, I throw a drop cloth up here. That way, you know, you're leaning right on the wire harness. We've got a plug. I don't remember if it's push or pull. We could do that probably when it's off. We could do this probably when it's off. This is going to the battery. And boy, that clicked on there nice before. And let's see if that's 12 or 13. I might have to get a socket. I got wrenches. Uh, oh, everything's going to be a 10, isn't it? Am I off or what? Yeah, they're 10. So we got... We've got a top bracket bolt here. We've got a wire harness connector here. Yeah, there's a nut under that. So that'll be a stud. One here, and then there's probably one more, right? Yeah, way over here. And so four of them across the top of this bracket. Definitely would be easier if I grabbed her, the ratchet. So let me grab that, which is handy. And I'll put a 10 millimeter, a short extension. Let's see how easy these will be. And then down here on the bottom, there's two of them that face inward. So these, they're just a stab on, which is nice. You don't need to take them out all the way. I'm going to loosen them up a good eighth of an inch. So you can see a gap behind them. I got glasses on with readers and I hate them. I hate them. Everything gets out of focus here. I should bring the little Ryobi ratchet out. But these bolts have been out many times. Fourth, fourth alternator. So tell me what eats up alternators. The battery is June of, of uh, 2020, so it's almost four years old. It's a thousand cranking amps at 32 degrees. It is a Walmart Everstart. The battery doesn't go dead on it. I don't have any draws or anything that I know about. Otherwise, it wouldn't start, you know. Um, Yeah, take these four out. Hurry up there, will you? Mm. Let's see if I can go find my Ryobi ratchet. That'd make it easy. I like the, the way these Ford alternators go on right on the top. Some of them are bare down underneath and oh, can't even see what you're working on. But these Fords right on top is awesome. I'm going to go get a ratchet because I'm impatient. And so are you. Be right back. All right, I got the little 3 8 ratchet. This will make it a little bit faster. Is there a lock on this? I've got to remember how this one is. Yep. A little faster. 
I don't know if the battery's up, but let's see. So the stud goes on the left and that holds that little wire loom. And then we got three more top bolts. One goes in the thermostat house in here. I believe they're all the same length. This one into the alternator. And then this one over here on the intake. Definitely faster, isn't it? And then here's our bracket. It's kind of slick. Easy way to mount it. Now we can lift our alternator up off those two bolts. And oh, hold on, I gotta go get the tiger. Come here, Tig. You ready to go in for a Snoopy snack? You are. Tiger's a vocal one. You see the Tig? He's out here playing, aren't you? Huh? You want a Snoopy snack? We gotta let the kitty in. Get that kitty out of the way, you know? They, they're they demanding. They want to come in and out every minute. So back to the alternator. We're going to lift this up. Our battery cable's disconnected. Doesn't look like anything's overheated. I want to turn this bearing again. And see how much grit sound because we got a little squeal in the morning. I was going to start it up and have you... Uh, listen to it but it you start it it goes with our engine rpm and then you turn the lights on and it gets louder definitely sound like a dry bearing we got water dripping off the eaves into the gutter it's loud over here alternator's pretty hot it's pretty hot and i haven't been in running this since uh two hours ago what time is it it's going on five o'clock so it shouldn't be hot still. I can't hear the noise right now. But while I'm at it, because the belt's loose, again, I want to turn all these other pulleys. We just did that, but turn all these other pulleys. Listen for noise. I do have one of them car stethoscopes. I can listen to everything. I want to confirm the alternator, you know. The uh, water pump, that's tight. Boy, I wish it wasn't drippy loud out here. I could hear everything. The alternator output was like 14 point something, so it wasn't electrical. But when you put a load on it, it would get loud. Hmm. I just don't hear it. You know what I'll do is I'll disconnect the electrical. I'll go in where it's quieter inside and turn it and listen. And maybe I'll put that little stethoscope on and listen to see. Make sure the bearings are loud in that. And it was the other day.